In this video, I'm encouraging you to create art that you will hang in your own home. Yes, on your walls. Today, I'm sharing five top ideas for creating art as home decor. Hey friends, what's up? Welcome back, my name is Shada and on this channel we get creative together and I try to take the fear out of the artistic process. And today's video is, a, I think, a great example of that because we're going to create art for our homes. What could be better than painting something yourself and then getting to enjoy it as some decor for your abode? Uh, and the nice thing about creating art for the home is that it doesn't need to be super intricate. Most of the time you just want to play with a little color or pattern, maybe texture. So you don't need to paint the Mona Lisa in order to hang something cute above your couch, okay? We're gonna have fun and we're gonna keep it simple. Now I'm creating art for my living room and we're actually in the living room right now. Chris and I moved to Halifax in the spring. So we're sort of uh, just finishing up getting settled in this new space. And actually, if you wanna take a peek into my home style and my style style, like uh, where to get a nice gray t-shirt maybe, you can follow my new secondary Instagram account at shada.style. So for art stuff, follow me at Shada Campbell on Instagram. For style, you can follow me at shada.style and kind of get a peek into um, what, what our apartment looks like and that kind of thing. I'm having fun decorating. That's uh, definitely one of my hobbies. And this room right now is sort of a big white room, but I'm making it into a cozy space with a lot of pattern texture. We're using like jute, wood, cane, wool, all those cozy fall things. And I need some art to kind of top it all off. So that's what we'll do today. We'll keep it simple. I'm going to do a bunch of different examples. So hopefully you'll find that one of these things speaks to you and you can create some art for your own house or apartment. So let's get started. So step one is basically a little bit of shopping. You can make any art look really professional and wall worthy by simply putting it in a nice frame with a good white mat and a great place to get beautiful, modern, simple, that's a lot of adjectives, but simple frames at a good price is Ikea and almost all of them come with a nice white mat. So uh, that's what I've got behind me, a couple Ikea frames. And then second shopping trip is to an art store. Most good art stores will have a selection of papers and all different colors and textures. So just starting with a paper that's a color you like and that goes with your decor is a great first step and will kind of get you on track to creating something that's going to look great in your space. So I've broken my ideas for creating simple wall art into five categories and the first one is colored paper. Working on colored paper is like starting an art project and it's already half done for you. You've picked some colors that already look good with your living space. And uh, what I did is, as I said, I just went down to the art store. They had tons of different colors, lots of grays and browns and creams. That's what I was mostly choosing from. And I picked up a whole bunch, spent about $10, came home, looked at them in my space. And what I really liked was this gray with this cream. I like the way the two of them look together. So what I'm going to do here is work on the gray paper and we're going to do some really simple art. I have um, a, some white acrylic paint, a little palette and this hog's hair bristle brush which is going to give me like a very uh, painterly look because the bristle is so stiff and all I'm going to do is take a whole bunch of that white acrylic paint on this stiff brush and I am just going to basically scribble with the paint because I'm working on dark paper, the white paint really pops, and I'm just creating art that looks cool. I think it's gonna look great. I'm planning to put this one in my bedroom on my dresser, and it's actually going to be stacked behind another piece of art. So while this one may look simple, it's really going to be a backdrop and complement everything else on the dresser. 
if you're interested in getting some of the artwork that you see on the channel, think about signing up for my Patreon. Every week I give weekly bonus goodies like art prints, coloring pages, and worksheets, and this week you can get yourself some pretty wall art. Head over there after today's video. Next category in our simple wall art is lines and shapes. I think it's pretty obvious that you could use any medium for this one, but I'm going to use watercolor since I'm so comfortable with it. And I want to use black, that's just the color I have chosen, so I'm mixing up a nice opaque black paint on my palette. I'm using a number six round brush and some 140 pound watercolor paper. And what I'm doing here is just uh, doing a very simple shape, a contour drawing basically, and you might be able to tell that it is the the shape of a pear that is emerging. I sketched it out in pencil and now I'm just going over it. Remember, simple can be beautiful. You don't need to paint something really intricate for it to be worthy of putting on your wall. In fact, especially when you're layering pieces of artwork and stacking frames, it can be nice for the art in them to be simple and not overly intricate. Maybe some of it is, but then you'll want some really kind of basic pieces, for lack of a better word, to complement the others. As I finish the contour drawing or painting of the pair, I'm doing some brush strokes that are a little drier and that just makes it look more like a brush stroke and in that way the painting becomes all about the brush strokes, all about the lines and shapes just like the title describes. <laughs> okay, and this one in my living room is, spoiler alert, just lines on brown paper. That's all there is to it. It's simple, but I love the way it complements the floral piece. And that brings us to our next category, which is botanicals. You know I had to put some botanicals in here, so here are my tips for painting simple, beautiful floral wall art. Go with one color. Here I'm mixing up a sepia brown. It's a mix of brown and purple, one of my favorite combos. And you don't have to do something really intricate. It could just be leaves. Remember, leaves are all about the brush strokes. Simply run the belly of the brush across the surface of the paper once or twice, allowing a leaf shape to emerge, and then use just the tip of your brush to create the stems or to refine the shapes of the leaves. You can plan your floral ahead of time by sketching it out in pencil and then going over it in pen, or you can just put paint to paper and see what emerges. I find that's not too difficult, especially if you're just painting leaves. It should look organic and a little messy, a little weird can be good. Some of the leaves are bigger, some are smaller. Have fun with it. And as I said, choose a single color. That will make a really striking piece that is graphic and also really subtle and beautiful. I like a sepia brown, but I also like a nice indigo blue or black or gray. Since leaves especially are all about the brushwork, if you find it easier to create the shapes by pulling the brush towards your body, I often do, then don't hesitate to turn that page upside down and make it easy on yourself. Remember, make a few of the leaves a little smaller and a little larger so you have some contrast of size. And uh, also think about placement on the page. You might have your art totally centered. For me, I did this little botanical sort of off to the left. All these little choices like color and placement will create art that is unique to you and your home. This little beauty ended up in my YouTube studio and it's the perfect piece for the space. Next, I have a fun one and that is art created with masking fluid. So masking fluid is something that I often use with my watercolor paints. It's a great way to protect the surface of the page below, whether painted or not. It's a liquid latex that you paint on and it dries quickly. So I'm gonna open mine up. I usually use it with a cheap brush because it does dry so quickly and can wreck a brush. Because I'm working on a large piece, I'm using a large paintbrush and I am just going to kinda harken back to the first idea here and do a bunch of 
basically big scribbles. I wanna create a piece that's abstract and free and just fun. So I'm painting with the masking fluid. It's important that with the masking fluid, you put it on the page and then you just leave it. You can go over the area once or twice, but if you paint over it as it's drying, that's not a good thing because it will start to kind of peel up and it'll just get really messy. So paint it on and then leave it alone. My only advice for painting the design is simply don't overthink it, get messy and weird, or you could do a pretty botanical, that would be nice too. But when it's done, you're gonna let it dry completely. Then we're going to mix up some watercolor paint, and it's a good idea to use um, tube watercolors if you have them, or liquid watercolors, because you can mix up a large amount of the color you'd like to use. So this masking fluid dried for about half an hour. I mixed up a beautiful light peach and you can see I've got tons of paint on my palette so I'm not going to run out. And with a large paintbrush, I am just painting right over that masking fluid with no fear. I go right over it. I like to have kind of a messy edge on the painting and gosh, this couldn't be any easier, I don't think. We're just adding lots of peach colored paint. I might add a little more in some spots to give me a nice wet into wet look and add a bit of contrast to the piece. And then we're gonna let that dry. So that I let dry for about an hour. And then the fun part, we get to peel up the masking fluid. It just peels right off. It's very plasticky and rubbery and uh, it leaves this beautiful naked page below. I've got this fun organic design and I think it would look good again as a layered piece in a stack of frames. My final idea for simple wall art is color blocking. So for this one, I decided I would use some chalk pastels, something a little different. I picked up these beautiful soft pastels in Paris last year and I really don't take them out enough. I have the Sennelier portrait set and well, I can't imagine drawing a face with these things. I love the color palette that is provided in this set and uh, it's gonna be easy for me to choose some beautiful shades that work well together, starting with this navy blue and I am just going to um, have a bit of fun. I don't really even know anything about how to properly use soft pastels, but hey, you can't go wrong when just creating art for fun for yourself. So I am basically just trying to make some big shapes and all I'm thinking about really is the color palette. I want all the colors to work really well together and I'm just having a bit of fun with this. It was actually kind of like finger painting because I was blending the pastels. I chose shades of gray and brown, cream and pink, colors I like and colors that I do have in my home. So remember to think about what your home looks like when you are choosing your colors. And the thing is, I did a color block piece in watercolor. You can see it to the side there in some of the shots. And I just found that it was a little too messy looking with all the wet into wet and the blooms. This one, I had these really true colors. It was simple. I could see doing this with crayon, with acrylics, or even with cut paper. Just make it really bold, colorful, and graphic. And that's about it for all of my wall art ideas. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial because I sincerely enjoyed making this. Creating art for my own home really allowed me to feel like the apartment was becoming mine and it made the space so much more personal. Do not be scared to hang your own art on your walls. You deserve that. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe.